This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to the Doctrine of Truth. We want you to enjoy, sit back, relax, and be enlightened by the true word of God. With your host, Bishop Algie B. Poole, Jr. Matthew 7 and 7. Knock and the door be open. Amen. Ask. Amen. Knock, ask, and seek. Amen. When those doors be closed, you know, if I learn that it's not for you. Amen. You try those things, you look at it. Then as time goes on, amen, he said, if you abide in me, St. John 15, if you abide in me, and my word abide in you, you can ask. So saints of God, we have a lot of resources that God have us to, to utilize to better ourselves, amen, to get around where we don't have to depend on others, but we have to do a little work on our own. Amen. Studying the word of God means something. It does mean something. Going to Bible study, getting that word in you. Amen. When time and trouble come up. Amen. You you are, you know God will. You know that's how the enemy used. He used God's word against people. He used uh, Hosea say, My people are being destroyed because of lack of knowledge. And he said it wouldn't be destroyed because God turned his back on them. That means we are able to, we can destroy ourselves making wrong choices. Amen. And God can turn it around every time. But sometimes we, we hurt ourselves. Amen. Because the enemy used that against us. We're going to pray. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for our life, heaven, and strength. We thank you for this study. Oh Lord, let the Holy Spirit come in now and, and lead and glide us and Give us the wisdom and knowledge, and you have us to know today. In Jesus' name, we pray, amen. I'm going to set up a little, this microphone is in my way, I can't hardly see. Set up a, a, little, a little study on, um, out of the book of St. Luke, then we're going to go into open class. Those that would like to ask questions on other material. We don't have it. We'll text it back to you at the time, but we just want to uh, Bible say that we can grow. The book of Hebrews, the sixth chapter. Amen. God come to help us <clears throat> that we can grow. And what we'll do, amen, going back to that area God bless your sister. Glad to see you again. Amen. Um, we're going to go in the book of Luke 13 chapter. Jesus is talking here, explaining. Amen. Uh, I want to, I want to find well, the pool, I want to find Solomon Temple, the building of Solomon Temple, the greatest Jesus said, greater than Solomon was here. It's first king, I don't know if the first king four or what. Uh, like I said, we both was running this morning. <clears throat> and sometimes you say you got it, and you don't have it. They'll smile and know what I'm talking about. You have it in your mind, and you have it in your. When Solomon was building the temple, and we're going to read the building of the t first king. Uh, if I got first king. All right, let's, let's go to first king, six. first king six. Six chapter. Yeah. Mm hmm. All right. And what verse is that? Uh, 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 since we're in Bible study, we'll 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 work this way, so everybody can feel comfortable. That sometime even, okay, First Kings, sixth chapter, beginning with the fifth verse. 
the fifth verse, what we we have, I've learned, let me say something about different Bibles, different translations. There are always, there are always a lot of translations. I forgot them at 29 or more, more translations out there. And I'll, while I stay with King James during the run of the years, King James authorized the translation from uh, was from Greek, Greek and Hebrew, or Greek and Aramaic, or Greek and Hebrew, that everybody can learn. The English speaking people can learn the Bible, and um, and down through the years, there have been many other translations to better. Because there's over 2,000 some languages in the world. But for, he used two different colleges, two different Bible. One college did the Greek, and one another college did the Aramaic. So one college did the Old Testament. I don't know if it's Oxford or which one, you don't have to quote me on that. And another one did the New Testament. So these different colleges came together and created. <laughs> And translated the New King James Bible in the King James Bible. It's, it's old English words. It's, it's, it's some words are very tough to say uh, to pronounce. Then you have the the uh, American Standard Bible. Then you have the Amplified Bibles. So I always try to bounce off King James into other translation to get a better understanding. A better understanding. But when you find somebody that's so far out of the way of King James, American Standard, Amplified, I think they have in New International, then you know that's the wrong interpretation of it. Uh, so you have to beware of the type of Bibles today. People try to make it so easy. But the Holy Spirit is the one that written the uh, Paul said in Timothy. I think it's First Timothy or Second Timothy. He said, "Holy men of God, written as God gave them, breathed on them, and gave the Holy Spirit, uh, gave them interpretation." Amen. God bless you all. Thanks for coming. Um, and this is uh, the writing of the Bible. Somebody said, well, man did it. Yes, man did it, but the Holy Spirit breathed on man. He breathed on man and, and inspired them to write. And as you look at the Bible, you can't, what, what man in the world can, can uh, give such an insight on the future, death and life, in the beginning of life, uh, ever, all these great philosophers, Amen. They're not able to go into something so, so deep. Amen. Because the, even though they do have something, but it came from, from Lucifer, Satan. Amen. He gave people some things too, but it's not compared to what, what God gave. Yeah. No comparison to what God gave. Uh, Psalm 12. This whole is <coughs> First King 6 chapter. Psalms 12 and 6, we find why it's so important to have the Word of God. Why God, while well, Jesus said in, in uh, Matthew's 4 and 4, the man should not live by bread alone. And we're going to go into that. It, we're slowly working that way. But, uh, the Psalms 12 and 6, you had that mother who read it. The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. All right. The words of the Lord is pure. In other words, you know, if somebody say something to you, Zionella, he say, somebody say, well, you know, I see you tomorrow. And they don't even show up. You don't even see them. You wonder why they said that to you. You don't know what's behind some people's words. They say, uh, I'll, well, <laughs> I'll be there in a minute. Yeah. And I learned, <laughs> I learned, 
that some people, a minute can be two hours. Uh, four hours. Two days. <laughs> Amen. You can just, well, you know I wasn't going to be there. Well, I, you said you was going to be there. So you don't know what's behind they words. You don't know what's what 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 meaning they was they was saying to you. But you you just took them at clearly at what they said up front. But God's word is pure. When God says stop, He means stop. Yeah. There's nothing up behind that. Ain't nothing behind that. But you notice how the devil came to Eve in the garden. He told he told uh, Eve. God really didn't mean you not surely going to die, but God told him the day you eat, you're going to die. But the enemy come up and say, God really don't mean that you surely, you not surely going to die. So it's a play on words. The enemy used play on words, amen, and twist the words, and that's what you call deception. Yes. There's a lot of happening that today in the biblical world, religious world, uh, so this, when God says something from the Bible, and the Old Testament can purify the New Bible, the New uh, New uh, uh, New Testament, you can go back and find it in the Old Testament. Old Testament, you can find it in the New Testament. So we need both of them to work together, because they, the Old Testament, Paul says, I'm a schoolmaster. You know, it's elementary school to our young people. The Old Testament is the elementary school where everything started. So God's words is pure. It's been purified seven times. It's been tested and tested and tested and tested over the years. Yeah. When he says something, that's what he means. You can stand on it. If he say he's going to give you eternal life, he's going to give you eternal life. He's going to give it, it's been tested. And when you do what he tell you to do, he have he knows what's in the spiritual world. That's, that's where we are. We don't know. In the spiritual world, we have to test, we have to depend on what he's saying, uh, what Jesus said. Jesus said we're going to have eternal life, and we have to depend on what Jesus said and follow what he Jesus teaches us. I had this dream many years ago. You know, when you get down, God can send you a vision or a dream to uplift you. I had this vision many years ago. The Lord, uh, I was walking on this road. It's like out there. <clears throat> you know, on the side of that road, it was a big old snake. Big old thing. Like a dragon, they call it, way up in there. <clears throat> and he spoke, he said, as long as you stay on this road, he can't bother you. Mm. I saw him as long as I stay on it. You you can tell where the enemy is. You probably know what neighborhood, the places to go, people you don't talk to. But as long as you stay straight and God's living, they can't do nothing to you. They can't do nothing to you. Peter said the enemy is like a roaring lion. You know, they be hollering and going on Try to try to push you off that road, but they can't. They really can't touch you unless God wants them to do something. He no, he may. God know you're not like Job. <laughs> he know when you test your faith. Amen. But the enemy make you feel like you got to get off that road. No, just stay right there. All right, let's go into First King, sixth chapter, and uh. I don't know if I'm on on the air or not. I didn't check, but anyway, we're we're doing programming. Sometimes those that listen to our radio broadcast, and uh, we're on two different internets, uh, trying to get the word out. And uh, sometimes we record these programs to the air out to the people. All right, we first came. We're gonna read first King, and. Uh, the sixth chapter, King James, in the fifth verse. And against the wall of the house, he built chambers round and about, against the walls of the house round and about, both the temple and of the articles, and he made chambers around about. Now, this is Solomon building the king, building the, the temple. 
the workers and everything they was doing. Then neither most chamber was five cubits broad, and the middle was six cubits broad, and the third was seven cubits broad. But without in the wall of the house, he made narrow rest round about that the beam should not be fastened in the wall of the house. And the house, when it was in building, was built on stones made ready before it was brought thither, so that there was neither hammer nor axe nor any tool of iron heard in the house while it was while it was in building. All right, we're gonna stop there. We're gonna go to second. We're gonna go to uh, Saint Luke. Now notice that. <coughs> All the material was brought in ready that it might, uh, you would have no hammering, no hitting, no, no nails, nothing in the, when, it, when the temple was being built, nothing was being made or heard in the temple. You, you, didn't, you didn't hear that. You didn't hear no, no scratching, no painting. Amen. It was brought in ready. <clears throat> Notice what uh, St. Luke, St. Luke, the 13th chapter, we was talking about, and Jesus was explaining to the Pharisees and the Sadducees and more. Amen. St. Luke uh, 13 and the, uh, the 18th verse. Jesus was explaining to him about how the kingdom of God is being built. In other words, his followers, how those that come to Christ, how they accept Christ and how their life being restored and how their life is being upbuilt. Notice here, 13 and 18, uh, being the 18th verse in King James. Then said he, Unto what is the kingdom of God like? And whereunto shall I resemble it? It is like a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and cast into his garden, and it grew, and waxed a great tree, and the fowls of the air lodged in the branches of it. And again he said, Whereunto shall I liken the kingdom of God? It is like leaven which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till the whole was leavened. And he went through the cities and villages teaching and journeying toward Jerusalem. All right. Can you get with the Message Bible? I was sorry, there's the Message Bible. Some of you don't have the Message Bible. So we, we have the uh, Bibles on Internet. <clears throat> Some of you can get the Internet Bible. I mean, an app, I think they call it the app and they have so many different Bibles in there and uh, we call the message, one of them is called the message Bible, I forgot to talk about that one, I found that that one was pretty good in translation just read the 18 the 20 verse down to 20 21, 20 and 21 he tried again how can I picture God's kingdom? It's like yeast that a woman works into enough dough for three loaves of bread and waits while the dough rises. All right. Levit is an Old Testament term which means yeast. I think the American standards say levit too. I'm not sure. But it's yeast. You know how you put uh, those put cooks. Now you put a little yeast in, in making bread. And it rises. It's rising. So here, God is explaining to the, the Pharisees and Sadducees and those around his disciples about how the kingdom of God is being built. The kingdom of God is being built. And those of us that accept Christ as the Lord and Savior, sometimes you might not see things that are happening in your life right away. 
right away. Because what's happening is happening on the inside. Inside a person. It's just like the leak, the uh, seed. Those of have know, know, know how uh, the farmer plants seed. Now you put seed on the ground and the ground uh, the seed go down in the ground and you know sometimes you have to water it and you have to keep things from around it and as time goes on uh, like Ellis Myers was saying last night after a while you see a little bug come up out the ground. But what was been, what was happening was below ground. See those that accept Christ and say, Lord, I, I accept you in my life as a Lord and Savior, the seed began to grow in their life on the inside. You might not see any, any great uh, falling away on the outside. You might not see any great thing that you as a person, people like to see, oh, they, if they save, I don't see anything happening. Like they expect, that's what the Pharisees say. The Pharisees say, show me some signs that you say, amen. Show me some signs that, you know, God is in your life. But after a while, like Jesus said, uh, the hunger and thirst after righteousness. They begin to hunger from the inside that they want to be in church. They want to be around good people. They want to stop what they're doing. And after a while, the more they read the Bible, the more they begin to hang around a godly people and more and more they begin to what? It begin to grow up on the inside. Slowly coming up. And Jesus was saying to the world, Amen, my kingdom is coming up, but you can't see it. But it's like living. It. It's like yeast in the bread. After a while the yeast you see the bread the saw real blossoming up out of the pan. Amen. You can see the flour real coming like the mustard seed begin to come up small. Small, but that tree starts growing and growing and growing. And after a while, it's so big, birds are coming and light on, the, light on the tree. But it started off small. It started off small. So those people that accept Christ as their Lord and Savior, God knows that it's, it's, it's going to be like a yeast in your life. Amen. After a while, when it starts growing in you, you're going to start having a hunger for God. You're going to have to start hunger for praying. You're going to start having a hunger for reading the Bible. You're going to start having a hunger, amen, for doing right. You're going to start having a hunger for singing. You're going to start having a hunger for coming, going to church. Because what the word, the seed is growing. The Holy Ghost is growing. God is growing. The new life is growing up in you. And people don't want to wonder why. Say, why you don't act like it used to act? Well, I just don't, I just don't want to go there. Amen. I wish you stayed home because you ain't no you ain't no fun no more. Because what the seed is coming up. When that seed start growing up in you, you don't want to do what you used to do. See, so Jesus was explaining, Amen. A greater than Solomon is here. Solomon built the temple. You didn't have no no builders out there cutting with the saws and hitting with the hammer. Amen. And putting up the big old temple of uh, boards and stuff. No. They brought that stuff in ready. God got things ready for your life. Yes. It's ready. So when he come in, he's slowly taking out stuff. People don't know what he's taking out. People don't might not know what you've been through, but you know what God done took away from you. And when God takes something out of your life, he puts something back. He just don't leave you out there. He just don't leave you out. No, God always puts something back in your life. Amen. So he said the kingdom of God is like living, like a mustard seed. Amen. We begin to see, now the seeds can get in trouble. That's why Jesus said when the soil went through the, the soil seed, he throwing a seed out in the field. If you ever saw a soil go out there, he throw seed. But now they got them tractors to spread seed. You see them on, even grass seed along the road. You see them guys just spreading seeds. Amen. To grow grass. And they come back and cover them up with sand and stuff like that. Amen. But if the seed falls in the wrong place, sometimes it can be snuffed out. It's snuffed out. Amen. But God by and by. Amen. You are growing. We say you're growing. 
When you don't want to be around bad people, you're growing. When you stop the nasty talk, you're growing. Amen. Because what? That seed is coming up. The more you give it, the more water, watering. Some people water and some people plant. Yeah. Young, young children and things like that. Amen. You come into Sunday school, you come into church. Amen. We're trying to plant good things in your life. Yeah, Amen. Plant you, would you accept God as your Lord and Savior and keep using the, the Bible and reading the Bible? Amen. After a while, you begin to see the difference between the good and the bad mm -hmm. in the street. Amen. So, greater than Solomon is here. The kingdom of God is coming up all out there. You might not see it. Amen. So when you find people that you think they should be doing one way, they're not, let's keep praying for them. Mm -hmm. Keep praying for them. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you right now, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Thy saving hand on every part of the listeners, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Give them encouragement, give them the understanding. Amen. Once you accept Jesus in your heart and repent, ask God to come into their heart and repent, open their mouths, say, Lord, forgive me of everything I have done. And knowing that the scripture is saying that he will forgive you of your sin. First John 1 and 9 says, if you confess your sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin. So we thanking God each and every day for the movement of our limbs and thanking God for having love. Understanding that God loved everybody. He loved the whole world. God so loved the world. John 3.16. But he doesn't love the, the, the actions and the ways they live. Amen. So that's why the Lord wants you to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. Amen. And the, and the little bit that you do believe, he's, he's accepting that. He's not throwing it away. And so the more word, the more God, the more God, the more word, the more you read your Bible, amen, and pray, amen, you begin to grow on the inside that after a while you will not have the desire, amen, to do the things of the world. God love you. If you make a mistake, say, Lord, forgive me. I'm sorry. The Holy Spirit on the inside, he began to show you you made a mistake. So personally, say, Lord, forgive me. And keep going. Don't give up. Amen. The enemy wants you to give up. Yes, you do have an enemy. Yes, you have a fallen angel. Don't love human beings. Yes, he's going to hell. He's dying. Death is real. Heaven is real. So is the rain and the climates. And the world is real. And God is real. And you begin to understand that he's real. He's real in your soul. Amen. God bless you today. Thank you for listening. And remember, amen, you're growing from the inside out. Amen. God bless you. Until next time, we love you. We love you. We care for you. Search the Bible. Search the Bible for yourself. And go to a Bible-believing uh, area, amen, in the, in the tabernacles, and they read the Bible, amen, from a King James with a good, good start there. And remember, God is real, just like you is real. God bless you. Next time, it's your pool. Thank you so much for your time today. We hope it was well spent. Joshua 1.8 says, Read and meditate on the word day and night, and be careful to do what is written in it. And your way will prosper and be successful. We want you all to be successful in the Word of God. If you would like to send your prayer request or questions, they're welcome at thedoctrineoftruth at gmail.com. And if it has been a blessing to you and you would like the true word of the gospel to continue to be spread all over the world, we welcome your donations at P.O. Box 2338. Tallahassee, Florida, 32316. God bless you.